All right, I have to just hit that big square button that says REC on it, right? And then it turns red, and that means we're recording. I believe that indeed it does. <laughs> That's how that works. All right. So, so uh, here we are again. I hope you guys had a wonderful Independence Day week. Uh, you celebrated the 4th of July. Uh, it was weird. We're back. Oh, don't start yawning. We're back, and uh, of course... As per usual, as per usual, the the time, the day, the week, whatever that we decided to take a break, a big story hit, and oh, every time we do that, every time we do that, something happens. But but I digress. So today we're going to talk about what we're going to do: the PFT training camp after action talk about what we did and and uh, what we're going to be doing and all that and then we're going to pose the question who is going to save your children uh i don't know and if the answer well if your answer is anyone but you you might want to listen up we've got a homeroom for you and we've got a bullet points for you and we've got a finished firearm segment for you so boys you have anything to say before zach plays music uh, thank you guys for joining us. I really thank you for joining it. us. I was just trying to figure out because I just typed the word grad program to somebody. And then I was like, oh, wait, is this the, we're recording the grad? No, we're not recording the grad program. This is the public. So this is the public I wanted to uh, greet you guys accordingly. So thank you. So is does this look correct in your camera? Is it just backwards in my camera? Yeah, it looks good yeah it's correct in my camera. Oh, okay. All right, cool. All right. Did you buy one of those from China? No, this you is a were gift. A, you, you, no, uh, you were China not part of Blackwater. In the Imperor from of uh, the Imperor of China, Genghis yeah. Khan. No, this did not come from China. This was, this was a gift. From, Remember, it's Chinggis. Uh, yeah, Chinggis, Chinggis, Chinggis Khan. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys don't know what we're talking about, go ahead and check out Brian Regan. Yes, one of the funniest humans on the planet. But, I just watched oh i'm sorry i'll shut up okay <laughs> play the music zach and then we'll get started welcome to student of the gun radio planting freedom seeds since 2013 here we don't just talk about guns and gear we also discuss current events and politics because guns are politics now sit back relax and allow today's episode to drip ever so gently into your ear please welcome your co-hosts founder of mastermind media and consulting group jared martin and the shipping ogre zach martin now, give it up to your beloved host, the Pimp Hand of America, Professor Paul Barkley. Yes, indeed. All right. Is this thing on? Yes, indeed. So, uh, wow, since we were together again, or since we were together last, uh, I've been a special guest. I've been a guest on Mark Walter's Armed American Radio Show. And I did not play my guitar while Mark was talking this time. So <laughs> remember, I, I confessed. I confessed on the show last time we had. And it's funny um, that he he called me and he's like, hey, you want to come on the show, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, sure. And he's like, nope, don't play your guitar this time. And I was like, I know, I, I know, I can, I. I confess. He goes, I know. I, he goes, you didn't need to confess. So I heard it. And I was like, no, I know you heard it. I know you heard it, Mark. And then I was a guest on Bill Frady's uh, Lock and Loan Radio, where we had a discussion about the DeLonghi coffee maker. It was actually a very similar discussion to the one that we that you and I had uh, that we had here. I was telling them about how you know the first one went gets up, and then uh, we contacted them, and they, I like boobs. They sent us an upgraded. They they With upgraded two D's. us. Yeah, for a she's... double dose of coffee. Yeah, and, and so it was good. It's good. Oh man, what? So what did you? What were you saying right before the break? You said oh, I was you, you got say a call. That I watched Tom Segura's uh, Delio. Wow, what a piece of steaming garbage that was. Oh, I, I thought He's it was just pretty funny. Really, the new one, yeah. Sledgehammer. Yeah, Sledgehammer. I thought it was pretty funny. There was a lot of nah. things. Uh, maybe not. <clears throat> he just funny. phoned it. Dude, there there was a couple of funny in. parts, but there were a couple parts in there that I was like, Bruh! that was shocking. I didn't so, expect that to come out of Well, here's the, yeah, here's the deal with Tom Segura. Bless his heart. 
The the first couple he did, all right, this is what I compare it to. The first couple uh, of Netflix specials he did, like in 16, 18, stuff like that, my my sides hurt from laughing so hard. I, that was the first stand-up I've ever watched of him. I've seen sp- short clips and whatnot, but I've never oh, seen a full stand-up. No, I, I've watched all, you know, your mom discovered him about five years ago. Anyway, uh, and then, you know, he was, the some of the, like the, the Tourette syndrome one, I've watched that probably 20 times. And when that's one, the one that he just did ended, I thought to myself, can I, would I go back and rewatch those? The answer is nope. Probably not. And you know what else is a steaming pile of crap too? The new season of The Witcher. Oh no. Yep. It's crap. Really? Yep. It's crap. So I thought, oh, wow, because the first one was really good, right? Like the first season one was really good. You're like, wow, this is all this stuff's going on. Wow, this is cool and everything, right? So the long-awaited third season, oh, my Lord. They've got like 18 subplots going on. They've got all these subplots. And like every, it's almost like every 30 seconds, they're switching scenes to, oh, let's go to this kingdom. You remember this? And of course, it's been so long. Like when when did the, the like was it 2020 that they did season 2? It's been a couple of years, right? So, it's been so long that now they'll they'll go to you know, a scene and and the guys like and I'm sitting there thinking, am I supposed to remember who these people are and and so you got all these these subplots and all these different kingdoms and all this stuff, and it's just boring. And being Netflix, they had to go down the sodomite path because if it, you know, it's uh, Netflix is apparently owned and run operated by the gay mafia. So they're like, hey, you know this character that you've known for all this time? Yeah. Oh, they're gay. What? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that character is gay. But they weren't gay for the first two seasons. Well, yeah, but we, we, we realized when we were writing season three that there wasn't enough gay in it, so we needed to write some more gay into the show. So I'm done. I watched the first three or four of the new season. And I'm like, yep, I'm done with this. Um, I'm done with that. And the Segura thing? No. He phoned that in. That was nope. Nope, 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 nope. Done with you. And what's funny, the reason that I, I, uh, I was aware of both of these things, and then I'll move on, trust me. The reason I was aware of both of them was because um, that they did some uh, socialist media marketing, Netflix did, and they're like, the top two shows in America right now are Tom Segura and the season three of The Witcher. Yeah, well, first of all, that may or may not be true. Uh, but the reason it is is because everybody expected big things because of the previous one. And then they're going to show up and be disappointed. Like, what is wrong with Hollywood? Well, I know what's wrong with Hollywood. They're evil. Um, the, the writers are evil. The, the people there are evil. That's what's wrong with them. So. Oh, and uh, just a quick aside. Have you seen it? Didn't it? I knew this was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen. So the the Sound of Freedom movie just did. They premiered this last weekend across the country. The what? Sound of Freedom. No idea what with that James. Is. Wow, you've been living under a rock uh, because everybody else in America knows what it is. Um, and and uh, it it look it took all of twenty four hours for the mainstream news media and them to send their, their evil pundits out to talk about how the movie was based on exaggerated statistics and unrealistic this and that. So the, the left, the left wing media is covering for their masters. They're, they're covering for, for child rapists and pedophiles. Yep. Yep. And it, it took all of 24 hours for him to get out there 
And they're like, no, no, this is a, it's a, it's over. It's exaggerated. And, and, and they're using false statistics. And then that's not actually, it's not actually the problem that you think it is and, and so on and so forth. So yeah, that was interesting. All right, let's uh, go ahead and get into the. Yeah, let's get into the Patriot Fire Team camp after action. Yes, indeed. So the weekend leading into the 4th of July holiday, the weekend leading into Independence Day, we hosted a Patriot Fire Team training camp here in the mountains, uh, in the wilderness of Utah. Well, not super wilderness, but uh, more wilderness than if you live in a city. And Jared, I'm going to go ahead and throw it over to you, let you give your impressions first. <clears throat> you of ready to camp? give your Yeah, of the camp. Uh. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Yeah, that's right. 10 out of 10 would recommend. So the there's something new that I learned every one of these classes because you continue to pull knowledge out of your head and and uh, shove it into the class, whether it was there before or not, which is fantastic. It's great. And uh, if I would read the, the course outline manual, I would probably know what's coming. But um, sure. yeah, so, so there was some new things on that I got to learn this time and quite a few new of the new things that I learned were actually about students and and teaching students and whatnot. And it's one of the benefits that I have of being Paul Markle's son is that I get to watch him instruct people. And he's got this insane ability to really distill complicated information down into something that's very easy for many different age ranges to understand in this class we had uh we had a pair of twins that were 17 and then we had people in their 30s 40s 50s uh, nobody in their 20s i don't think yeah so it was we skipped the 20s but it was the teens and then 30s 40s and 50s and and there always are different types of learners right we've talked about this in our instructor development program for those of you that have taken that course there's different types of learners that consume different types of or that consume the information in a different medium being maybe it's it's oral is what they like to hear or maybe like they like to read the written word or see graphs and diagrams or whatever that is and so most of my learning points from this one came from came from the uh actually getting to observe dad teaching the students and fielding questions and whatnot And, but one of the things that, one of the skills that I learned in the class that I had never, that you had never taught before in front of me was the ability to find North with your watch. And I thought that was was extremely great information. You've got to use an analog. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Digital watch doesn't work. You're like, yes. 1705 on it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, and uh, well, a couple of the students had digital watches. So yeah. it's, it, it was a learning experience. And that's one of the things about this class, the PFT training camp, is that you get to test the gear that you bring. And so that's why we recommend bringing, we, have, we give you a gear list, obviously, of things that you're going to need. But if there are other things that you want to test and, and make sure that work that aren't on the list, bring them. That's totally fine. As long as you have the time and your own time to do that, obviously we can't inject it into the class. Um, But yeah, that's, it's one of those things where this class is to test your gear and the, uh, the fact of whether or not you are prepared to, to live in a primitive situation. And it's not even really that primitive, but Compared to modern times, it's a primitive situation for one, two, three days. Uh, how much food to bring, how much water to bring, how much uh, you need a repair kit for your tent. Do you need to bring uh, extra blankets, more than just a sleeping bag you have? Does your sleeping bag actually hold to the weather? Does it keep you warm at night? Because out here in the, the mountains, it it gets warm during the day and it gets cold at night. And especially if it's rainy and windy, it gets really cold at night. So it's just one of those things where you get to test your gear and see how it works for you. And then 
it's it's way better to do that than you have than if you you know a natural disaster or a man-made disaster happens and you have to actually use your gear for real it, that's not the time you want to spend finding out what works and what doesn't you want to do that in a training class before you actually need to use your gear and and uh and work as a team with your your people in your neighborhood or wherever you are right well and, that's uh, that's why we do training yeah 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 th that's a, something that people just have this i don't i don't understand how we got to this point as a culture where people maybe has it all i don't know if it's always been this way see i don't understand it because i've always for my entire adult life i've always engaged in training yeah like when I was 19, I spent, I, I spent my own money. My parents didn't pay for it. I spent all of my own money, saved my money, nickels and dimes, and, and I arranged everything. You know, that's the thing. I was 19 years old I went, when I went to ESI for two weeks, and all of that was arranged by me. My parents didn't arrange any of it. I signed up, did the enrollment, did the work, save my pennies nickels and dimes you know and bought the plane ticket all of that stuff and and went and did it so i i don't I, it's it i find it strange that people who claim to be adults don't understand the value of training and the, the probably the most important part of infantry school when when you're you know i was in the marine corps and i was in the infantry obviously you go to infantry school and you have to go into the field and so on and so forth. The re the, uh, in addition to learning how all the stuff works, you know, like, but you could learn how the stuff works. You could learn how the machine guns and the mortars and the, and the rocket launchers, you could learn how that stuff worked uh, in the classroom and you could learn on the uh, formal shooting range. You don't have to go and live in the woods to learn how a machine gun works. Right. The reason they take you out there and make you do that is so that you learn how to do it and that you make mistakes. You know, you don't bring enough socks or, you know, whatever, and you make these mistakes in training and you learn from these mistakes. Like you didn't bring lip balm or you didn't bring bug spray or you didn't bring whatever. Uh, and you learn from those mistakes that way, as you progress, when it's real, you don't make those mistakes. Mm -hmm. uh, Jared, I saw that I see that you uh, added camp chair to the gear list. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's a recommended but not required. You don't yep. have to bring a camp chair. Yeah. Uh, people are appearing like, and, and here's the thing, kids, and this isn't just student of the gun classes. This is any class. This is tactical response classes. This is gun sight classes. This is any, if you're going to go to a class, before you go, go to that website. It used to be you would get a brochure or a catalog or a letter in the mail. Uh, and now you can just go to the, it's so convenient now. You just go to the website and it says recommended gear list. Read it. And then go ahead after you've read it, read it again. Uh, because we had people who, showed up without stuff and they're like hey no one told me you didn't tell me to bring this i'm like well maybe i didn't call you on the phone and tell you to bring this but if you go into the gear list you'll see that it says to bring that you see this is when jared i, I believe that receiving a physical and i'm not telling i'm not asking you boys to do this because um we got we got grown people in america and they should be able to take care of themselves but back in the old days like when i went to esi there was no internet there was no yeah. websites they sent you a letter and in the letter it had a checklist it had a gear list in the so it's like you know and you could actually take a pen and go okay check 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 um but yeah uh james yeager did I don't know more than one videos about hey before you come before you fly out here or drive out here or do whatever here's what I need you to do I need you to read the gear list 
and I need you to read the gear list and understand that the reason we did the gear list is because we've been doing this for a long, 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 long time. And that was, that was James's thing is James would, he'd say, I send people a gear list and then they show up and they're like, well, I thought those things were all just suggestions. I thought I could get away with two magazines, you know, mm -hmm. I thought it's like, what it's did like, it, what, based what did I tell you to bring? Well, I know you said bring minimum three magazines, but I figured I'd get away with two or o only one came with the gun. The gun only came with one magazine. You're like, yeah, I understand that. Um, that's why you need to go and buy more. <laughs> So my impressions of the camp were everybody, uh, everybody who came was a fantastic student. Uh, everybody who came and showed up for the class uh, was a great student. They, they, they paid attention and they listened and they were enthusiastic. Enthusiasm, one of the leadership traits, right? Uh, yeah, the, the main reason we do these things is because I know that there are people out there who have bought a bunch of stuff. And they have this illusion that uh, in the event of an emergency or a crisis, I own this stuff now and I will use this stuff. Mm -hmm. That we're, what, Why do we go to training? We go to training to make the mistakes during training. Because mistakes made during training might be annoying or bothersome, but they're not life-threatening. Uh, they're not critical. Generally, they're not critical. You make that mistake in training, you're like, okay, we made the mistake in training. What did we learn? Fix that. Move forward with our life. Don't make that mistake anymore. If you make mistakes in a real world, in a real crisis, in a real emergency, people can get hurt or injured or die. That's why we practice. That's why we do it first. Uh, one of the things that I will address, and this is just a blanket address, the the PFT training camp is not a, well, we shoot, we have live fire, but it's not just live fire. And we have comms and land nav and signaling, but it's not just land nav. It's not just comms. It's not just signaling. It's a lot of stuff. What I, when I created this class, I actually went through a mental checklist of things that we did in infantry school, right? Of course, infantry school, when I went through, was eight weeks long. I think it was eight weeks. Um, so, obviously, we can't put everything that the Marine Corps or the Army does in infantry school in a weekend. And people are like, man, we should have taken more time to do this. We should have taken more time to do this. Like, dude, we only got so much time in the days. And I don't really think... I, Jared, I don't think, to be fair, I don't think we were wasting any time. I don't think there was no wasted time. Sure, um, no. And, and with the camp environment, you pretty much start learning from the time you wake up and, and you learn until you go to sleep. So they, they, you have an opportunity. It's not like, you know, with a, if you go to a, a class class, like you show up at nine, come in the classroom, sit down, blah, 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 have a lunch break, blah, 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 you know, finish for the day between four and five, go to your hotel room, eat dinner, whatever, come back the next day. Uh, with this, with the camp, now some people might like, I don't need that much. I don't want the full immersion. I don't want to do that. Okay, cool. That's cool. But uh, when you come to a camp like this, you start learning at the very beginning. You start learning uh, at the very beginning and you continuously learn and we do lots of things. We do things that, well, you, you probably can't, can't or won't do other places. So. And all of that is said to let you guys know, uh, you guys out there uh, who said, oh man, I really wanted to get into this last camp, but here was my excuse. I had a this, I had a that, I had a burp -a -da -burp -a -da -da -da. Okay, cool. We cool know story. who you are. We know who you are. <laughs> we, we know the people who put wrote in the comments. Oh, man, I really wanted to get into that one. But but I couldn't because, you know, it was too close to Arbor Day or my, I need needed to go get my cat spayed or whatever. OK, cool. We've got another date. It's in the show notes. 
It is the first, second, and third of September, 2023. Yep. Shop SOTG.com and just use the search bar on the homepage. Search for training camp and it'll pop up for you. It's right yep. there. We've got can- two two of the students that were at this past class are actually live with us right now. So if you guys have anything to add that we may have missed while we were vamping there, please let us know. It's one of those things where I think every one of our classes is like this because our students are just, they're cut above everybody else. And uh, I could be biased though. So yeah. there's that, but it's one of those things where in, in every single class, there's so many learning points. And then you get to spend the time. My favorite thing in any of the training classes is the time that you get to spend with liberty minded individuals and the training camp enhances that because you're you're it's a full immersion class so you're there with the liberty minded individuals for the entire time rather than breaking at the end of class and maybe going to dinner together and then you go back to the hotel and you kind of digest the material that you learn for the day you know you get to do that together in the full immersion patriot fire team training camp and that's my favorite part i'm gonna i'm gonna hit you guys up with this uh, when we do these camps, the, this is not a KOA. Uh, it's not a full hookup thing. You don't get, you know, electric sewer water hookups and all that stuff. No, it's it's you bring a tent and bring yourself and, and bring everything that you're going to need, uh, including water. And if you don't want to haul a bunch of water, well, well, Zach, if they don't want to haul you know, five gallons, 10 gallons, whatever of water with them. What can they do to ensure that they have water? Now, all right. The caveat here is we do have a natural water source. Yeah. But we're, we're not in the middle of the desert where there's no natural water. Uh, we have a natural water source. So what could they, what could they bring with them to ensure that they had enough water? Yes, because of course you can't just go over to that you know str- you know creek and just dip in a coffee cup and start drinking. You got to make sure it's clean. You got to make sure it's pure. Got to make sure it's safe to drink. And we have a very convenient and easy way for you to do that. Over on shopsotg.com, you can get one of two different lifesaver water purifiers. You can get the big old boy, the Jerry can that can hold what was it five gallons? Five gallons, five like 4. gallons, 8. and can yeah. filter approximately like a million. <laughs> can filter it's a, a lot of water definitely it, it, more than enough for one camping trip. thousands of gallons of water or yeah, if you it, want it, it, it will filter five thousand gallons without having to change the filter yeah and if you want something a little more convenient then you can also get the wayfarer which is basically like a little pump with a hose in it throw that in the creek pump 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 and then boom you got some clean water right in your mouth so over at yep, shop fill, your, fill your canteens and there you go yeah shop sotg.com the lifesaver water purifiers you can get those today Yep. Yes, indeed. All right. It is time for us to jump on over to the Duracoat Finished Firearm segment of the week. And hello, Duracoat people. Hi. All right. Um, people have been asking me, oh, man, this last month or so. What's going on with the with the the firearms industry? Uh, sales are down. Yeah, you know, whether it's online retailers or in person retailers and so forth, sales are down. Uh, yeah, no kidding, because it's all sales, all sales of everything. Ask car salesmen. Ask ask a person who's in the used car business. You know, Jared, that's uh, that's a great point. So uh, I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah. Car salesmen, right? Car lots. Do you think those guys have cyclical? Do you think their sales uh, go in cycles? Or do you think they're always like a car lot? Does the car lot is like every month is a record breaking month? Like every single month, like it just gives up and up and up and up and up. And we just sell more cars and 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 more cars. cars. Like until the end of the world, you say, um, no, obviously that's not the case. 
If you own a car lot, you have to understand that you're going to have high months and you're going to have low months and you're going to have high months and you're going to have low months. So how if you're a car dealer and you have a car lot and you knowing that you're going to have highs and lows, what do you do? Do you stop advertising during the low months? But if you're a car dealer and, and you say, well, this, 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 these months are generally the low months. So here's what we're going to do. No more advertising, no more marketing, no more advertising. Because that's how we bring, that's how we increase car sales is to stop advertising our car lot. And this is when you look at me and you're like, um, no dummy. That's not how it works that in business. If you own a car lot and sales are down, you don't stop advertising your car lot, just hoping that people will figure out to come buy cars from you. Because if you live in any city at all, you're not the only car lot, are you? Nope. You're not the only car dealer in this town. There's 10 other car dealers or seven other car dealers or five other car dealers. And if you decide, I'm not going to advertise anymore, no more advertising, we're just going to hope people show up and buy our cars. Is that a good plan for the future? Probably not. So in our, our industry, in the gun industry, in the firearms industry, people are all like, oh, man, you know, everybody, everybody bought their gun in 2020, 21, a little bit into 22. Uh, Americans were panic buying guns again right but most of those people or a lot of those people now they've got their gun and they're, they're done or they bought their ar you know right they bought their ar and now they have their ar and now they're done so if you are a gun dealer if you are an ffl guy and you're trying to think like what what can I offer my customers? They, you know, um, my customers are all, they all have ARs now. I've sold ARs to all my customers. I've sold shotguns to all my customers. Whatever. What can I offer these people? Because obviously, you got to still have sales, and you still have to keep the doors open, right? Get your funky butt over to Duracoat University. Because why? Well, this is something that your customers don't have yet, but it's something that you can sell to your customers. Uh, the, the trick with, with gun finishing is, and, and a lot of people don't want to, the majority, right, the majority of gun people are afraid, rightfully so, because of FedEx theft and UPS theft and mail theft and so forth um and also the paperwork a lot of people are uh, are very timid about boxing up their gun and shipping it right it, when, when i was coming up it was that was very common people did it all the time no one even blinked an eye uh, you're like oh well yeah this this custom 45 gunsmith and yeah, yeah i just I buy this stock gun, I box it up, I ship it to that dude. He works on it, does his magic, and six to nine months later, maybe a year later, um, the box comes back to me. I open it up, and it's a super, super G Wiz Custom 1911 now, right? Uh, today, because of, well, there's, there's a lot of reasons. People are, they don't like to do that. They don't want to do that. Uh, and especially if it's a big gun, like it's an AR or something. How many people do you know would, you know, if you, you offer the best custom gun finishing in America, but in order to get the gun to you, people have to box it up, they have to ship it to you, and you do your thing and you ship it back to them. Yes, there are some people who will do that. The majority of Americans won't, though. The majority of Americans won't. They'll either, they're like, because they're afraid to let that thing out of their hands you know, into the FedEx hands is, or the UPS hands is, or whatever. Like, yeah, is this going to, is this going to stop in Denver and be stolen by the criminals in Denver? 
or is this going to go through Philadelphia or Georgia or Atlanta? Is it going to go through Atlanta and the criminals in Atlanta are going to steal it or whatever? Uh, so what is the solution? Well, the solution is easy. The solution actually isn't that hard. The solution is that you, the local gun dealer, you send one of your guys or two of your guys, you have them go through Duracoat University and learn how to do really nice custom finishes on your customer's guns. And then your customers can just bring the gun to you. You hold on to it. And, and, you know, Jim, Bob, Fred, Joe, whatever is your custom gun finish guy. You're like, okay, here's the deal. Um, blah, blah, blah. We'll put it in the queue. It's going to be approximately two to four weeks or three to six weeks or, or whatever. We'll call you when it's done. Boom. Right. And, uh, and it's not that hard. What you do is you have Jim or Bob when they go th while they're going through Duracoat University you have them do a couple of G whiz guns that look really cool. And you put them up on the rack in the shop and you're like, boom. And people walk in, they're like, wow, that is cool. Like, I know it is like, where did you get that done? And you're like, we do that here. See that sign that says custom Duracoat finishing right there. This is official Duracoat right here. Yeah. See that sign. That's us. Oh, we don't have to send it away. I was going to do that, but I was like, ah, then I, was like, I don't want to box it up and, and ship it away. And what happens if, you know, in transit, it gets stolen. You know, I don't want to deal with that. Cool. You don't have to deal with it because here's the deal. We are an FFL, so we can take the gun from you, hold on to that gun, Duracoat it, make it look cool. You come back, boom, boom, write us a check, give us your card, whatever. Um, and there you go. So if you're a dealer out there, and I've said this before, and I wasn't joking. If you're a dealer out there and you, you're, you're doing the whole, oh, man, sales are down. Yeah, no kidding. That is the cycle of the world. Did you think sales are just going to like keep going up, up and up and up and up and up and up until the end of time? You know, diversify, brother. That's business. So the way you diversify and the way you offer your customers a product that they previously didn't have is you send one of yourself or someone else or a couple of your guys to the Duracoat University. You're like, yeah, but how do I find this Duracoat University? That's the, that's the trick. I, I can't find it. How do they find it, Jared? How do they find Duracoat University? Oh, it's very difficult. You go to studentofthegun.com slash Duracoat. It'll take you directly oh, where you need to go. and it takes you right there? Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah, and then they will, you get into that, and they will teach you how to Duracoat like a master. And bing, bang, boom. Now, now you, the local gun shop, now you have something new, a new product to offer to your customers that they previously didn't have. Uh, there you go. Uh, all right, uh, and and you know you know what you practice on. What can you practice on? <laughs> you can go to high dash point firearms dot com and get yourself a C nine or a C forty or C forty five or a C three PO or whatever you want to do, um, and, and you can you can practice on that. And practice on that and uh, you can even get a 30 a 30 super thanks for asking <laughs> get a 30 super carbine and practice on that you know actually if, if you really wanted to if if i owned a gun shop and i wanted people to talk i would get I, that's what i would do i would get a high point carbine and then I would have my, my Duracoat custom finishing guy do like a, a super cool, like whatever's cool, like Tiger Stripe or something like that. Do a really super cool, badass Tiger Stripe Duracoat finish on it and then hang it up. Put it in, put it in the display case, put it on the thing. And because you know, people wouldn't be able to not talk about it. That's the thing. They come in there like, 
I can't not comment about that. I have to. And they're shaking and tremoring. They're like, I, I have to comment about that. And that's good. That's the thing. That's good. Because if they comment about it, they're like, you're like, oh, well, you know, we don't, you don't have to do that. If you don't want to buy a high point, don't buy one. But you can get that tiger stripe on anything. Oh, really? Yeah, really. So, uh, speaking of High Point, have we have we heard anything yes. new from? We have. Uh, well, I mean, maybe. Not that we can say. So yeah, doesn't but, matter. Uh, so yeah, just let me know if if we if we hear anything new from those guys. Oh, yeah. uh, oh, Zach's coming over to visit me here this week. You know that, right, Jared? Ooh. So if you have any care packages to send over with Zach, send them. Roger that. So, so I, there you go. There's the the high dash point. You can practice on that. And Zach, is there anything new on Juxi dot com? Is there is there anything new? As a matter of fact, there any is new a videos? brand new video on Juxi dot com that we just uploaded yesterday. Question mark? It was yesterday, right? Yeah, twenty three hours ago. Uh, I think so. It is the Kanek MC nine Mete review where you took the mm -hmm. uh, Mete out to the range, shot it for a little while, and gave your thoughts about it. Yeah. So, yeah, if you guys haven't seen that yet, you need to avail yourself to that uh, to that video and watch it. Dudes, that pistol is pretty darn impressive. What do you think, Jared? Yeah. Yeah, let me guess you haven't shot it yet. Yeah, I have. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. When did you shoot it? Uh, a couple weeks ago, a week ago, something like that. Really? Well, it had been a couple oh. of weeks ago because I was gone last week, so. Oh, okay. I didn't. I didn't know that you had shot it. Um. Hello. Do, 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 Sorry. Do, do. Being distracted. <laughs> Did you shoot it? This is when he's like. All right. So uh, let's move on to the next thing because we have got a lot of dead <laughs> silence here with no answers. So the review of the um the 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 Canic Mete and. Uh, it's a disappearing it, gun. Did you guys know that? Yeah, it's a disappearing gun. Well, where is it now? Poof. There it went. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's it's a lot of value. You get a lot of value out of that. I'll tell you what. Um, for, uh, like I said before, um, that's I don't really get excited about new firearms because I'm jaded. Mm -hmm. To be quite frank, and um, well, I was pulled that one out of the box when when I first picked it up, and I was fondling it, and I was very happy, and I was like, "Wow, this is actually I'm excited about this." And there, you know, I pick up a couple guns here and there, and sometimes I'm more excited about some of them than the other ones and and whatnot. So this is one of those ones that I was like, "Yes, I cannot wait to shoot this one." And, uh, but yeah, so go to studentthegun.com slash juxy and watch that video. Yep. There you go. Uh, there you go. I, I was actually kind of amazed. I was actually kind of amazed. So that is something you're going to want to avail yourself to. All right. Moving on. What time is it? It's time for me to be quiet and for you guys to listen just a little bit louder. Attention, new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. Go to studentofthegun.com well, or shop SOTG or anywhere you want. Sign up, pay attention, be there, or be square. All right, what time is it? It's time for a Brownells Bullet Points, brought to you by Brownells. All right. 
right. Bing, bang, boom. Bing, bang, boom. It is time. It's summertime. Some, 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 summertime, summertime. And what's going on in the summertime? Well, uh, what's going on in the summertime is, uh, <laughs> is Brownells is doing a warehouse sale. Well, they're doing two things. They got free shipping right now on orders over 99 bucks. So if you spend $99 or more, you get free shipping. Some restrictions apply. They're doing a warehouse clearance sale. Uh, shop now for the warehouse clearance. And so just to, out of curiosity, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm a curious cat. I'm going to go ahead and, and see what is actually on sale. The KE Arm Strip Lowers, 69 bucks. Uh, bolt carriers, BCGs. How many of you guys remember the great, uh, it was the, the, the Obama gun bubble it was the previous one, uh, when, when nobody could find ammo, remember, uh, and all the 22 ammo evaporated poof, overnight. Remember that it was like toilet paper. It just, poof, I can't find 22. Oh, I can't find 22. Poof, it's all gone. Uh, what was the other thing that they couldn't make fast enough? Bolt carrier groups for ARs. We actually toured a, uh, a custom, uh, well, a gun manufacturing facility, and they showed us there's racks of black rifles. And, and they said, uh, you see those rifles there? I'm like, yep. And he said, they're all finished, except there's no bolt carrier groups in them because we're waiting because we're because all the in America all of the BCGs were back ordered. You're like, "Whoa, the, what? Is that a thing?" Mhm, mm that's a thing. So right now I'm actually on brownells.com and they have bolt carrier groups on sale. Not only are they in stock, but they're on sale. I'm not telling you that you should like mortgage your house to buy a bulk carrier group or something like that. But I am going to tell you this. It's, it's a lot easier to buy. And this is going to sound weird. The BCG, the bulk carrier group for the AR, and then go ahead and build the gun around it. Um, that's that is a thing that is a thing and you know it, it, it's it's great to have all the uppers and lowers and pieces and parts and and magpul furniture and all that stuff to put on your guns but if you don't have a bolt carrier group you kind of well <laughs> i don't know what you're gonna do without it. it's one of those critical components right uh kind of like barrels and things so if you've been thinking about buying or, or building an AR, right now they've got them on sale. They're in stock and they're on sale. So, uh, I don't know. Do you think maybe you should buy them? I don't, you do whatever you want. You're you're an American. You can do whatever you want to do. I don't care. Do whatever you want to do. Uh, but uh, my advice to you would be this, though. People ask, somebody asked me about like nickel boron and all this fancy stuff. I am a traditionalist. I would say stick with the original AR-15 M4 bolt carrier design. Just stick with the original design. You know, um, there's, there's a lot of companies that make them. You know, Bravo Company makes them. Brownells has their own. They have a... a Brownells branded version uh, of their Brownells. Actually, if you if you go to their website and uh, and you you search under brands, if you search under the Brownells brand, you you might actually be amazed uh, at how many Brownells branded products that they have. You're like, what? Yeah, yeah. Now there's they started. Oh, I don't know, 10 years ago? It was early, mid g actually making Brownells branded parts and components, barrels, you know, uh, 
all this all this stuff pistol grips and barrels and and bolt carrier groups and 1911 slides and and all that jazz so uh, according to their website they have 1381 brownells branded products right now <laughs> so you're like what when did this happen i don't know so the the uh, the moral of the story today for brownells bullet points is it's summertime and things are on sale if you've been waiting if you've been waiting now is the time. Now is the time. Oh, and I, I've also been watching the uh, the sales. I've been watching the uh, the various. Like I said, I get probably six emails a day from all of the different gun online retailers, right? And I've been watching the ammo prices. I've been. Wa I always use nine millimeter training ammo as kind of the barometer you know, to see where things are, because that's the most popular handgun ammunition in America, nine millimeter, right? Uh, and I know it's, that burns some old people. They're like, that's bull crap. Should be 38 super. <laughs> okay, whatever. Here's the reality. I'm seeing nine millimeter brass full metal jacket, nine mil dropping. I'm seeing it drop. I'm seeing it come down. It's dropping to around 25 cents a shot. If you guys remember, what was our, when we were doing the ammo stock market, what was the buy price for nine ball? 20 cents. 20 cents. And for five, five, six, two, two, three? 30 cents. 30 cents a shot. We're that creeping was, up on it again. That's, that's down the buy it. price. So right now it's creeping down around 25 cents a shot. The trick though is, if you're ordering it online, it's 25 cents a shot plus what? $30 shipping, $25 shipping. So you're like, oh yeah, well, it's, it seemed like a great value. And then I had to add an extra $29 to ship a case to me. So the price just went back up. And the, and the thing is, you won't find these prices in gun stores. That that's this. Have you noticed that, Jared? Do you ever browse? Like, yeah. I'll, I go into gun shops and I browse and I, I do the the math real quick in my head. And I was like, these mother lovers are still asking thirty seven cents a shot for nine ball. Yeah, you know why? Why is that? Because they're still running on the inventory that costs that much. They're still yeah, they're still running on their panic buy inventory. They're like, we can't. We can't sell it for less than that because we'll lose money. I'm like, yeah, but no one's going to pay you for it. That's, I mean, I don't know who's, maybe they're, people are just like one boxing it at a time. People are coming in, they're spending $15 and 47 cents for a box of nine. Um, like, well, what should it be, smart Alec? It should be $9 and 99 cents a box. That's what it should be um, for training ammo. But, yeah, I'll I'll go into these places. I went into one and and they wanted they wanted nineteen dollar like nineteen ninety seven for a box of fifty nine mil. I was like, to be fair, nineteen ninety seven is a pretty good number. Yeah, it is. And I was like, what? No, nah, I don't think so. Zach, you're biased. It's unfair. Yeah. Oh, you well, or and if you the gas station, the 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 uh, um. The, bless their hearts, I really like them, but they're the, they've got the, well, you want it or don't you? It's, it's there. It's, you know, uh, there was one that had, uh, it was $45. No, it wasn't 45. It was 50. It was like over $50 for 45 ACP, one box of training ammo, a full metal jacket. Like who are you? Who are you selling this to? This is like hurricane prices. <laughs> and then, and the funny thing is, I go every time I go in there, I look and I'm like, "Yep, that box is still in the. It's still in the counter. It's still behind the glass." <laughs> Imagine that. Nobody's nobody's come in and jumped on that deal. I was like, "What?" <laughs> anyway, so long story short. Uh, pay attention. Oh, and and if you want to save on really good ammo, go to defiantmunitions.com. That's defiantmunitions 
We don't, we don't have the hyperlink in there. Defiant Munitions. Dot com. And you use the promotional code SOTG. If you go to defiantmunitions.com and use the promotional code SOTG, you will save money on your purchase. You will get a uh, premium quality ammunition. Uh, I don't did like I spell, to use. Did I spell it wrong? I don't like to save I, money. You don't like to save money. I don't like to save money. Uh, but if you like to save money, on a premium quality product, a, a premium product, uh, you can go to Defiant Munitions right now and use the promotional code SOTG. There you go. All right, it's time for me to be quiet and for Zach to talk. Go ahead, Zach, talk. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. Yes, indeed. ShopSOTG.com is where you can go for all the best stuff on the internet, up to and including the slings and sling bullets from our buddies over at Ready Man. We've got over yep. on our store right now. It's, it's warm outside. It's sunny. It's pretty nice. Why stay inside? Uh, and you don't have and you don't have to go to the range and you know burn up all that expensive expensive ammunition. You can instead buy some reusable bullets and learn how that's to right. use, and learn how to sling like a Roman with the shepherd or uh, survivor slings and the sling the Petitan sling bullets, which now come in seven. I repeat, seven different colors. We got seven we got different black, colors. Yellow. Orange, red, green, opaque green, and opaque purple. Wow. Well, you, there you go. You can see all of them on ShopSOTG.com if you're curious what the hell they look like. And uh, yeah. <laughs> also, the, the slings are currently on sale. So if you want to get into it, get some more of these, these bullets, now it's perfect time because you can also get a nice little discount on your sling. And there, there is go. the survivor sling and the Goliath sling. Glass sling has a uh, what's it called? It's apocalypse paracord in it, so you could sling a freaking pumpkin with that thing, and it probably wouldn't break. Yeah, or or like pool ball, billiard balls, or something like that. Yeah. Ooh, that'd be cool. Oh, uh, so uh, and also, if you guys, if you don't follow them, if you don't follow Ready Man on their socialist media, um, they, they've actually they've got a bunch of cool videos uh, of some of people who've gotten really good uh, at using these slings. It's kind of amazing. Uh, if I, I've watched a bunch of videos from Ready Man on their like Instagram and stuff like that uh, um, and sent in from their customers. And they uh, there's people that can like hit a pumpkin at, at 50 yards with a sling bullet and uh, hit a watermelon. And there's dudes that like knock water bottles off of tables and stuff with these. Like, that's good. And, and, it's it's real. It's not trickery. It's not it's not fakery. You know, it actually is real. All right, let's move on to the Student of the Gun homeroom brought to you by Student of the Gun University, the sweetest smelling university in America. All right, Student of the Gun homeroom, dangerous on demand. Are you prepared to be dangerous on demand? Is anyone coming to expect to self-rescue you? And I'm betting that a whole bunch of you uh, out there in my audience did not hear about this story. It was a uh, mass shooter identified in Philadelphia. You're like, why have I not heard about this? Why hasn't the media been hammering on this for, well, ever since it happened? <sighs> Well, Jared, why do you suppose that the national media hasn't been hammering on this and, and beating us over the head with it for the last week? Uh, I would assume that it's because the shooter does not fit the bill. So, yeah, this story is from DailyWire.com. Uh, and it says, Philly alleged mass shooter identified as a cross-dressing BLM supporter. 
you have mm. to identify as those things? Well, they, he was identified as a cross-dressing Black Lives Matter supporter. Oh, go ahead and give us the deets. Oh, you're saying that they identified him as mm. that, not he mm. identified himself as those things. Mm. Go ahead. Give us the deets. You're just going to let it go. Dang it. Yep. The gunman charged with killing five men and injuring two children in Philadelphia Monday night has reportedly been identified as a cross-dressing Black Lives Matter supporter. The suspect, 40, issued social media posts supporting Black Lives Matter and also posted photos on Facebook of himself wearing a bra, a woman's top, and earrings with his hair braided long. Mm Mm-hmm. He also posted messages such as, how do you know if an evil spirit is following you? And a photo of map of a map listing black massacres across the United States captioned, we kept the receipts. Mm. One post showed a person holding a pistol accompanied by the statement, wherefore art thou opposition? So I may slide upon thine block and runneth down on thee. Another post uh-huh. showed video of children firing a rifle. The suspect had an, quote unquote, an aggressive approach to some things in life. Tina Rosette, 49, who lived with him in 2021, told the Philadelphia Inquirer. Rosette's daughter, uh, Sienna, who is 24, added that the suspect often showed her a handgun and was trying to get me comfortable around guns and stuff like that. And Rosette moved out in 2022. Tina Rosette said that she thought the suspect had been in a dark place lately. Mm-hmm. Responding to gunfire at around 830 Monday night, police chased the suspect who continued to fire his gun before he was caught. According to police commissioner, Daniel Danielle outlaw. He was reportedly using a police scanner to monitor police. The suspect was reportedly armed with a rifle, pistol, extra magazines, a police scanner, and a bulletproof vest. Police found dozens of shell casings in an eight-block area. Outlaw Mm -hmm. said, quote, you can see there are several scenes out there. We're canvassing the area to get as much as we can to identify witnesses, to identify where cameras are located, and to do everything to figure out the why. Uh, Outlaw continued, quote, thank God our officers responded as quickly as they did. I can't even describe the level of bravery and courage that was shown. Mm. The victims yeah, it- of Monday's shooting have been identified as Lashid Merritt, who's 20, uh, Demir Stanton, 29, Ralph Morales, 59, uh, Dwan Brown, 15, and Joseph Wama, Jr., 31. Mm. Daily Wire is not naming the suspect in keeping with a policy that seeks to deprive mass shooters of the notoriety they often crave. Yeah. Good on them. So, Take so them. homeboy here is that you want to hear something yeah. funny, Jared? While you were doing that, I typed in Philly mass shooter. And uh, so the, uh, this is crazy. This is the this is psycho world that we live in. It says Philadelphia officials have stated that the alleged mass murderer was not transgender, despite online photos and the fact that he liked to wear women's clothing. So the Phil- Philadelphia officials, who are these officials? Or they're very concerned about protecting the reputation of the trans community. Like, just because this lunatic dressed up in women's clothing and put on makeup and stuff doesn't mean that, that, that they were trans. They're not trans. Like, well, what, are, what, are, what, is, what is trans? Well, it's just because you dress up in women's clothes and put on makeup when you're a man doesn't mean you're trans. I got one here from July okay. 5th. It says Philadelphia mass shooting suspect told police that he did it to clean up the neighborhood. There you go. There you go. So, uh, yeah, 
and, and you're like thank thank the Lord for the for these brave men and women in uniform. It's like yeah, but there's five people are dead. Like they're like, yeah, but it could have been worse. Yeah, but oh uh, yeah, that you don't need to protect yourself. You don't need to protect yourself. Police, the, the, we that. have the brave men and women of the Philadelphia Police Department. They're going to protect you after. Well, after you're dead. Oh, uh, but if it saves just one life, well, if it that saves goes both ways there, sucker. Yeah. So why should you carry a gun? Well, because if it just saves one life, so homeboy it's worth it. Homeboy like to this. This was a, a, a lunatic. This is a, a person who is is mentally unbalanced. Um, publicly supported the the uh, the, the scam, the BLM scam. BLM, all right. Anybody who, who's out there, like I support BLM, you're you're a, you're an idiot. Okay, that was that was a scam. Where did all the money go? Well, the the money that wasn't siphoned off by the criminals in the organization went into the pockets of the National Democrat campaign. Okay, so the. All of all the stuff we're about to talk about actually plays into the uh, it plays into the whole uh, expect to self rescue. Oh, so while we were out, while we were off, the uh, the the coward of Broward, that disgusting piece of human filth, the the the. All right, this guy was in the uniform of a sheriff's deputy. He was operating as a school resource officer. He was an armed man in uniform at a school. Because remember, we've been told for years that there that there are no place, there's no place in our schools for guns and you can't have one in around near and if you're a parent and you have a concealed carry permit and you come onto the property with a gun on we'll arrest you You're like yeah but I, i'm i'm you, i'm gonna protect myself you don't have the authority to protect yourself and besides that that's why we have these brave men in in uniform our brave men and women in uniform that's that's their job okay but what what happens when they run away like cowards well what do you mean i don't know what do i mean so it, this is we've, we've been drawing this crap out for years and years and years now so first, this scumbag was fired without, you know, he was, he was fired and he wasn't going to get his retirement. Then his union apparently petitioned a judge or whatever, and they reinstated their, his, his retirement. So then they charged him with dereliction of duty. You're like, how can you charge somebody with dereliction of duty just because they ran away and let kids get murdered? I don't know. I don't know. How do you? So this guy's this guy's attorneys did a really good job handpicking a bunch of sycophants and morons for the for the uh, uh, for the jury, and and oh praise the Lord, he got, he's he got off. So Scott Peterson, the despicable, disgusting coward. The criminal in uniform who ran away and left children to die. Never, ever, ever forget this. They want you to remember Parkland because it's their this is this is why we need gun control. Mama na ma na. Um if if the good people are just gonna run away or the armed people or whatever are gonna run away. Uh, a, a killer with a single shot 20 gauge could walk into to a school and just, I mean, if, if they got all day, this, that Nicholas Cruz scumbag, he, 
No one stopped him. He just got bored. Dropped his gun. It's like, okay, I, I'm done. And walked away. He had so much time that he could just stop and walk away. At Uvalde. They're like, oh, this is why we, we got to ban AR-15s. Like, the, the cops stood outside and just waited. That guy could have gone in there with a single shot Harrington and Richardson 20 gauge and a pocket full of shells. You and I are told by the intelligentsia, by the people who are smarter than us, that the only solution is more gun control. Well, we've had the Enhanced Gun-Free Schools Act since 1995. If you want to be a smart person, go back in time and tell me how many school assaults, how many mass murders at schools occurred before 1995, and then tell me how many happened after 1995, and then explain to me how your gun control scheme is keeping people safe. When you have somebody who swore an oath, and, and I know what people are saying out there, you're like, well, hold on a second, Paul. You have told us for a long time that, that there was a Supreme Court decision that says that police officers don't have to protect you as an individual, only in general, right? And, and you're correct. You are correct in that. But th what we're talking about right here is a man who was in uniform, in possession of a firearm, an armed man, an armed and trained professional. Remember, the police are, are the only ones that should be allowed to have guns because they're trained professionals. And you civilians, you're just a bunch of morons and amateurs. And what do you think you're going to do? What we're talking about here is supposedly an adult, an armed adult man who, when he had the opportunity to step in and do something, ran the other way. I don't care whether he was a cop or not. The fact that a man and a man who was armed would make the decision to run away and allow helpless children to be slaughtered is despicable. The fact that this piece of human filth hasn't done the right thing and removed himself from the gene pool is despicable. The level of cowardice is almost unfathomable. The idea that you say, in that room, in that building, right down the hallway, children are being murdered. What should you do? I'm going to run away. And, and I guess they're on their own. Uh, yeah. I, you're like, that's pretty hard. I can't, I can't possibly be hard enough. The, the fact that this, that, that I, I don't even, this is unfathomable. What kind of a country do we live in where we can get 12 citizens on a jury to say, yeah, if, if it was me, I'd have run away and let those kids die too. Screw them. What? Yeah, I know that the state says that all guns are, uh, all schools are gun-free zones, and na 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 na, and and it's okay that they're gun-free zones because we have brave men in uniform there to protect our children. You mean like in Uvalde, the brave men in uniform who stood in the hallway for almost an hour. 
this scumbag that ran the other way and is he's fighting for what's what he has coming to him oh you've got something coming to you and uh, you will be judged y- you might have tricked uh, you might have had some slick, slimy lawyers who were able to to convince twelve morons to let you off, but there's judgment coming for you, Scott Peterson. You despicable piece of human filth. But there's a lesson here, America, and the lesson is this: Who is going to protect your children? Like, well, you know, I send my kids to school in there, and they have an SRO there. They've got a dead, but that, 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 that. Uh huh. And, and you you believe that 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 they're going to protect them? Why? Well, because they have to. Because it's their job. Actually, it's not. Actually, we've proven once again that a police officer, while you could be in the middle of being murdered, right? Someone could be actively murdering you, and a police officer could hear your screams and choose to leave and go somewhere else. And when it's found out, you're like, yeah, but it, that guy will be, he's done. He's toast. Dereliction of duty. Da, da. No. The jurisprudence that we're establishing right here, the precedent that we're setting is that a police officer can hear you screaming that you're being murdered and walk away and the punishment they receive is uh, a retirement and a big fat hundred and four thousand dollar a year pension so you the citizen taxpayer are going to get this scumbag in florida is going to get a taxpayer funded pension until he finally expires what what kind of a world are we living in where we're rewarding cowards with pensions every time you hear someone say "Uh, we need reasonable restrictions and we need uh, there's no reason you should have that or that or that or that you know and you don't need that because we have the police you're a liar you're an imbecile you're like no that's that's not true this is one case paul this is one single case in america this is only one incident every other police officer every other person who works for the government is a good honorable person and they'll protect us and they'll save us and then yeah 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 well let's just bounce right over to tulsa oklahoma where another coward in uniform, a traitor, you know, Jared, did they stop? Somebody out there tell me, Jared, I don't know. Did they stop requiring law enforcement officers to have an oath of office? Because when I, when I became a cop, I did this multiple times. When I went to work for a municipality, I had to take an oath of office where I swore to uphold the Constitution of the United States of America and that of, because it was Ohio, of the state of Ohio, right? So, truth about guns, June 24th. We're just now getting to this because we had some time off. Tulsa, top cop. I'm a Second Amendment guy. I'm a Second Amendment guy, but giving up some of the freedom is fine. And there's but, not much info here. It's just the one paragraph quote from him. I suppose it's a quote. Uh, ultimately, I'm a Second Amendment guy. I own guns, of course, but I'm going. Oh, uh, do but you? I'm okay giving up some of that freedom, right? We had to give up some of that freedom after 9 11. I'm okay with waiting three days, five days, or whatever to get my firearm if I go out and purchase another firearm. So I'm okay with a pause to allow for weapons to be purchased and allow the government and the gun companies to look at the background and do a thorough check before that gun goes to someone 
Yeah, that's from a speech given uh, by the Tulsa chief of police. There, there's a detailed. Yeah. Um, let, let me hip you something to something this you, you freaking phallus with ears. Uh, the Constitution doesn't say that the government is your master. And the fact that someone would say, yeah, well, after 9-11, we gave up freedoms. And what did we learn? We now li- we live in a police state where the FBI can conduct invest can conduct terrorist investigations on parents who go in who speak out against their local school boards. This dude thinks that was a good idea. It was a terrible idea. Trying to Ben Franklin 250 years ago said those who exchange freedom for safety or liberty for safety deserve neither you cannot exchange your freedoms for safety you cannot surrender liberty and expect to be to remain safe this man is a criminal in a uniform this man is an oath breaker this man i'm assuming i don't know maybe they don't do it in oklahoma they always did. Maybe they don't have to swear to uphold the Constitution of the United States of America. The Constitution in the Bill of Rights doesn't say, well, yeah, all of this stuff, unless it's an emergency, unless it's a crisis, unless you can convince 51% of the dunderheads that it's not a good idea anymore. That's not what rights are about, jackhole. A right is not something, an inalienable right is not something that you get to decide and bargain on. You don't get to bargain away my freedoms. And I would ask this phallus with ears to explain to me the last time that the depriving good people citizens of liberty protected them from criminal behavior go show me an example of how the deprivations of freedoms and liberties has made people safer go i would ask this phallus with ears hey you you familiar with the enhanced gun free schools act the uh of 1995 uh yeah you are oh yeah you're not oh okay so uh, how many mass shootings happened in schools before that versus now versus the last 20 years go uh how did the surrendering of freedom and the surrendering of liberties uh, increase school safety uh, it didn't? Oh, that's right. It didn't. It actually made the situation worse, not better. This is such bull crap. Remember, when someone says, I'm a Second Amendment guy, but everything before but is bull crap. Everything before but is bull crap all right ladies and gentlemen uh we've coming up on the student of the gun university podcast it is a short form single topic easy to digest program and uh we've got a uh, we've got one coming up for you on thursday and it's going to talk about training are we training for the range or are we training for the real world which is it i don't know you tell me we'll find out together on the Student of the Gun University podcast. All right, um, one last thing. Did you want to talk about the uh, the hyperlink that's in the notes there, Jared? Yeah, I can do that. I, okay. Just a short bit here. We need your guys' support, So, and you can do that. We're going to put all of the ways that you can support us. Uh, we've had questions. It's like, hey, I, I listen to the show, and I, I subscribe to the grad program. And what else can I do to support you guys? 
Well, we were putting a page together for that answer. So go to studentofthegun.com slash culture. And that's paying homage to James Yeager. There's a difference between the gun community and the gun culture. Uh, those that support us, you know, we're part of the culture. And those that support us are also part of the gun culture. And there is a difference between those two things. So studentofthegun.com slash culture. Those are all the companies that support us. There will be links to some of the products on there. Uh, if you're not a grad program member, there'll be a link that you can join the grad program, those kinds of things. If you're looking to support us, uh, some people, they ask if they can give us a donation. Uh, the way to do that is just buy one of our products or support yeah, yeah, yeah. our the people that support us through the links that are on that page. And, and then we'll get a small commission on those sales. Uh, uh, we're We're not really open to taking just straight up donations from you guys. Because there are products that you can buy from us to get some value for your money. So please go send do me that. Bitcoin. Yeah, you can send us Bitcoin. <laughs> Actually, you can pay for your classes with Bitcoin. That's but, uh, all right. So cat and hat and that be that coming up tomorrow uh, on Thursday's bonus hour. If you're a grad program member, grunts are not stupid. And liquid IV. That'll, and then more stuff. Uh, and we've got more guy cops. More guy cops. Yes, indeed. Uh, that's called coming up tomorrow. So we got a leadership lesson, fighting fitness, guy cops. Uh, it's going to be a good time. Jo jo go join the grad program and, and at getsotg.com. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Until then, remember, you're a beginner once. You're a student for life. Thanks for staying until the end. Want to water the seeds of freedom we planted together today? Head over to wherever you listen to us and leave a like, rating, or review. It makes a big difference. Have a show topic submission? We would love to hear it. Submit it to info at studentofthegun.com. A delightful human will get back to you faster than you can finish a one-box workout. Remember to check studentofthegun.com often for new and free content, giveaways, and more. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. And remember, you are a beginner once, a student for life.